Why was Australia restless when Africa spent 14 billion yuan to let China's infrastructure help build railways? Let's take a closer look in this video. As we all know, as a veritable infrastructure maniac, China's infrastructure strength is obvious to all. In June 2021, China assisted the African brother Guinea to complete the Dapalon Santu Railway and open to traffic. This 125 kilometers long super railway has made many countries feel incredible. Such a difficult railway was actually built by China? It's just that when China and Guinea were celebrating happily, Australia couldn't stand it anymore and stood up and jumped. Why did the construction of the Dapalon Santu Railway amaze the world? Why was Australia restless again? As the saying goes, if a country wants to be rich, it must build roads first. This sentence is not only a wise saying in China, but also applies to the whole world. Guinea is obviously aware of this and plans to build a railway in its territory. Speaking of Guinea, this small country on the west coast of Africa is one of the least developed countries in the world. However, contrary to its poverty, Guinea is rich in mineral resources and has the reputation of a geological miracle. Among them, aluminum, iron and other ore reserves are large and of good quality, and the existing proven aluminum ore reserves rank first in the world. However, Guinea is holding such a large treasure, but it cannot sell it. The main reason is that Guinea is relatively backward in industry, and it is impossible to complete transportation construction only by relying on its own strength. This has also led to the fact that even if Guinea's rich mineral resources are mined, they cannot be shipped abroad. Therefore, Guinea's backward transportation seriously restricts the development of this small African country. In this regard, Guinea has considered seeking foreign aid. In this way, Guinea invested a huge sum of 14 billion to invite China to build the railway. In fact, Guinea's first choice was not China. Before looking for cooperation with China, Guinea first turned to Western countries. But those Western countries took advantage of the fire the most. Seeing that Guinea wanted something from them, they made all kinds of unreasonable demands. Moreover, Guinea's geographical environment is particularly poor, and even Japan, which was proud of the Shinkansen back then, also flinched. From this we can see how difficult it was to build a railway in Guinea. However, China's infrastructure strength made Guinea very excited. And for its African friends, China always provides assistance within its capacity to help them get rid of poverty. In September 2018, China Railway Corporation won the bid for the railway project in Guinea. The construction of Dapalon Santu Railway is the first time for China Railway Group to enter the Guinea market. This means that they did not have any experience as a reference, and they were completely pioneering in a new place. Well, as the first pioneers who came here, they really suffered a lot. The first thing was the language barrier. Not all communication processes were equipped with professional translators, so construction workers relied on gestures to communicate with local personnel. The second was basic necessities of life. These construction workers traveled thousands of miles to Guinea, and every meal they ate boiled noodles in clear water, occasionally with a pack of pickled mustard. If construction workers travel, they usually walk on their legs and rarely take a car. In this way, construction workers from China traveled across mountains and rivers in Guinea. Since Guinea is close to the equator, there are only dry and rainy seasons all year round. Sometimes the temperature during the day can reach 35 degrees Celsius. Such high temperature weather has had a considerable impact on the Chinese construction team. 
when it rains heavily in Guinea, the construction area would become muddy, not to mention the construction vehicles, and even the entry and exit of personnel was extremely inconvenient. However, the biggest impact on the construction team was from local disease threats and wildlife. In particular, the dual threats of the new crown epidemic and the Ebola virus have brought considerable challenges to construction workers. While maintaining quality and quantity, they also need to protect themselves from harm. The Chinese construction team lacked reference cases, which was particularly difficult in the early exploration process. The local environment was complex, the land-bearing capacity was not strong during the construction, and there would be a danger of landslides in the tunnel area, which caused the construction progress to stagnate for a while. This kind of problem has always plagued the construction workers, and they have been changing the construction plan according to the existing difficulties, striving for the smooth implementation of the project. In addition, due to the relatively tight construction period, the Chinese engineers have been trying their best to optimize the plan so that the project can be accelerated while ensuring the quality. Speaking of construction equipment, Guinea's infrastructure capacity was too weak. After the Chinese party arrived, there were almost no large facilities such as cranes that could be used here and it was all up to the Chinese party to transport them here by air and other methods. However, the Chinese construction team stubbornly overcame these difficulties, and these external difficult conditions did not affect the construction process at all. During the construction period in Guinea, the Chinese side also created many local jobs and solved the employment problems of local residents. On June 16, 2021, the Dapalon Santu Railway was successfully opened to traffic, and even the country's President Conde attended the opening ceremony in person. He also praised the strength of China's infrastructure and highly recognized Chinese technology. The opening of the Dapalon Santu Railway has enabled the realization of Guinea's rich mineral resources and directly promoted the economic development of Guinea. And it also has a lot of benefits to China. It has once again demonstrated the strength of China's infrastructure to the world and has become another brand new business card of China in the world. It also raised the friendship between China and Guinea to a higher level. In addition, China is a major importer of mineral resources. After Dapalon Santu Railway successfully opened to traffic, it won the local Samandu iron ore mining right in one fell swoop, which solved the shortage of iron ore in China to a certain extent. The Dapalon Santu Railway that China helped Guinea build has brought great benefits to both China and Guinea. This is a win-win situation. So, what does this have to do with Australia? Why did Australia become a clown again, jumping up and down between China and Guinea? In recent years, China's economy has developed rapidly and a lot of effort has been invested in infrastructure. In the process of developing railways, energy, etc., it is inevitable to need a large amount of mineral resources. Therefore, China has become the country with the largest consumption of resources such as coal and minerals in the world. Under such circumstances, many of China's mineral resources are all dependent on imports to meet the needs of domestic production. For example, China's iron ore resources are extremely dependent on imports. But if it always imports from those giant foreign countries, then China will be constrained by Australia and other countries with rich iron ore resources for a long period of time. And clowns like Australia, who are jumping up and down in the international arena and constantly performing against China in order to please the United States, cooperating with them for a long time is tantamount to seeking skin from a tiger. 
Therefore, how to break out of the situation of being controlled by others has become the main problem facing China's iron ore. In order to solve the current predicament, on the one hand, China is trying to improve the proportion of China's iron ore procurement and increase the demand for domestic iron ore resources. On the other hand, China is also trying its best to establish mining cooperation with other countries. Importing iron ore from other sources can effectively reduce China's demand for Australian iron ore. For this reason, after China helped Guinea build the Dapalon Santu Railway, Guinea has signed an energy agreement with China in return. That is to say, from then on, China can gradually tilt the proportion of iron ore import sources from Australia to Guinea. China's huge demand is a double-edged sword for Australia. Most of Australia's iron ore is exported. When China reduced its iron ore imports from Australia, it naturally affected Australia's local mining. It is no exaggeration to say that the reduction in China's imports of iron ore resources from Australia has caused more harm to Australia than to China, which mainly imports. After all, China can still find other alternative resources, but where can Australia find such a large financial backer? Thinking about the possibility of losing such a large amount of wealth in the future, Australia will of course jump in a hurry. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.